Let's see how to add AuthKit's hosted login box to a brand new Next.js app. And we're going to be using this official integration library from WorkOS called AuthKit Next.js. So let's start from scratch. We'll come over here and run npx create next app latest. And we'll call this AuthKit Next example. And we'll stick with the defaults. Now, if we cd into our example and run the server, we should see our new app running. Looks good. Let's go ahead and pop open our app and we will remove some of the default CSS styling as well as come to our homepage here and just make it say, hello, AuthKit, just so we're working with a clean slate. Okay, we're ready to add AuthKit. Let's come over to the docs and we'll go ahead and grab this install command. We can stop our server, run it, and start our server again. And uh, we have some environment variables here, so we'll go ahead and copy these, and we'll go ahead and create a .env and paste these in right into our app right here. Now, uh, this client ID and API key, they come from the WorkOS dashboard, which I have open right here. And I'm already signed in. If you don't have a WorkOS account, you'll need one, but it's free to sign up. And uh, once you do, you can scroll down and grab the keys right here. So let's go ahead and paste this one in here as well as the API key. And next, we're going to need the redirect URI. This is also configured here in WorkOS. Right here, we see a link for redirects. And uh, I have mine configured to be localhost slash auth slash callback. This is a public API route that our app exposes that AuthKit talks to. So uh, once we have this set, we can go ahead and copy this and we can just paste it in right here. And finally, we need a cookie password. And if we come back to the docs, we'll see this helpful command right here we can use. We can just pop open our terminal and run this. This is just so that our session cookies are secured with a secret that only our server knows. But with that, our environment is set up. The next step here is that public callback route. And uh, this is an API route, again, that needs to match auth slash callback. So let's go ahead and come into our app and make a new auth slash callback. And we want to make an API route, which in the app directory we can do by creating a route.ts file. So we'll go ahead and paste that in there. And our API route is all set up. And finally, we need to set up a middleware. Let's go ahead and copy this. And I'll come right to the root of my app and create a middleware.ts and paste this in. Now, this middleware is used by AuthKit for things like cycling refresh tokens. We need it available on every route that we want to use AuthKit's APIs. And you can see right here, we can restrict it with a config, but we actually want this on all the routes in this demo app. So I'll go ahead and delete that. And with that, we are ready to go. So we see the usage section here, but first uh, let's come back and actually get some UI into our app so that we have something to work with. I'm gonna open up my layout right here and we can see it's blank right now. Here's the body tag and the children. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and drop in a header and we'll see that this references a user variable. So let's just make this user true to start out. And we'll go ahead and wrap these children in a main tag with some padding. So um, this header just shows a welcome message. If we actually have a user, we can see right there it says welcome. And if I make user false, uh, we show this sign in message. So this is actually the bones of our header here. We have enough to start wiring up AuthKit. Um, how do we actually get this user? Well, let's come back to the usage and we'll see that there is a get user function. So let's grab this, come back, and we'll replace this with the call to get user. And uh, we can go ahead and import this right from AuthKit. This is an async function. So um, let's make this uh, an async function so that we can await it. We're here in next with server components. So this works perfectly right here. And now uh, we actually have this user object, which is either gonna be a user type or null. And so when we refresh this, we see that we don't have a user, which makes sense. We just started this, we're not signed in. So we're showing sign in. So how do we let users sign in? Well, there is another method from AuthKit called get sign in URL. And we'll await this as well. And this is going to give us a sign in URL, which is a link. And so this sign in span right here is actually gonna be a link tag. So let's go ahead and import link from next and we'll give it an href of our sign in URL. Let's save that, come over here 
click sign in and check that out. We are redirected right to Authkit's hosted login box. We can go ahead and sign in with an email or Google or Microsoft. Let's just use Google for now. And I'll choose uh, samselkoff at gmail.com. And we're redirected back to our app. We see the welcome message. And if we come here to our welcome text, we see we have a user object and this is actually fully typed. Let's go ahead and throw the first name in right here. And we see welcome Sam. So just like that, we have a sign up flow for our app. Um, we use a next link to link to the box. It redirects us back to the, to the URL we configured in our environment. And we have a fully typed user object right here, ready to go. Pretty amazing, pretty easy to get started. And I love how it works with server components and next link so seamlessly. So now that we're signed in, uh, how do we actually let our user sign out? Uh, let's go ahead here to the logged in version of the header and say sign out. And we'll make this a flex with some gap. And when the user clicks sign out, we want to log them out. So how might we do that? Well, if we look for a sign out function, we'll see this also comes straight from AuthKit. And uh, this is an async function that runs on the server. Uh, so this seems like a perfect use case for server actions. So let's go ahead and turn this sign out into a form. And this will be a button with type submit. And for the action, we'll use a server action. So we'll make an async function that uses server. And then we can grab this sign out function right here and call it right here uh, inside of our form, just like that. So let's see if this works. I'm going to go ahead and sign out. We can see the app refreshed. We see the unauth version of our header. I can hit refresh. Everything seems to work. And if I sign in, we'll go back to Google. I'll click Sam at Gmail and now we're back in so uh again just one more function call right here everything is being managed on the server we're using a server action right here um, to call this function just three functions and now we have sign in sign out and custom ui wired up to authkit and uh, not only that if we come back to our work os dashboard and we come over to users we'll see here that uh, our app has a single user it's me at uh gmail.com right here. And we can see that this user used Google OAuth to actually sign in and they've signed in twice. So a ton of functionality we're getting out of the box. Pretty incredible how easy this is. Now, uh, if I hit sign out and we take a look at this login box right here, it's great that this page is hosted. There's a ton of functionality out of the box and it's only gonna get better over time. But uh, you might be wondering if we can customize this. For example, let's say we wanted to get rid of this Microsoft sign in. Well, uh, WorkOS has our back here. We can come to authentication in our dashboard and we'll see all sorts of methods that we can use to allow our users to sign up. And here we see Microsoft OAuth. Let's go ahead and disable this, save the change, come back to our app. And if we click sign in again, now we don't see Microsoft. Pretty cool, right? Uh, the next thing you might notice is that this page is currently in dark mode and um, our app is a light mode app. And this is actually because my system is set in dark mode right now. If we come back to the branding section here of our configuration and we give ourselves a little bit more room, we'll see that we have a lot of settings here, but at the top we can set the appearance and uh, we can force it to light mode. So if we save this, come back and refresh, there we see light mode is already taken care of for us and now it matches our app. But I actually want this to be a light and dark mode app. So let's put the appearance here back to system so that it changes with my system. And if we refresh this, it'll be dark. Let's go ahead and add some dark mode styles here. Right on the body tag, we will add a dark mode background of gray 900, something like that. And we'll make the text gray 400. And on the header, we'll give this a dark mode background of let's say gray 800. Something like that. So now my app is a dark mode app. If I hit sign in, we see a dark mode version of the page. But if I were to come over here and change my system to light, we'll see our app is now in light mode. And when I sign in, the login box matches it as well. Pretty neat. Uh, let's go back to dark mode. And uh, what about these colors? We can see this nice kind of indigo accent color being used. Uh, but let's come to our app and say that our header here had a nice top border and maybe that accent color was this nice kind of sky 500. So this is maybe the accent color we use throughout our app when we sign in. Uh, we'd like to see that here as well. 
Well, WorkOS has our back again. Let's come here and change these link colors, both in light mode and dark mode to our sky color. We'll save that. And now when we refresh, we see those take effect. Pretty cool. Now the link is sky. Uh, the border here, the focus style is that nice sky. And even our highlight text color uh, matches that brand accent color. Um, finally, let's go ahead and update this fave icon. We can see the default one here, but uh, I have another one right here. So let's go ahead and delete this default one. I'll drag this right into our app. It's a cool little sunglasses guy. And uh, if we refresh, we'll see that shows up right here. But if I hit sign in, uh, we're not seeing that in Offkit. Well, uh, if we come here, we can actually go ahead and upload this to Offkit, our custom brand. Hit save. And if we come back and refresh, we now see our icon on Offkit. So tons of options for customizing the look and feel of the login box. There's one more API I want to show you from the SDK, and that is how to protect routes in our Next.js app from unauthenticated users. So let's come back here right to our layout. And uh, in the header here, I'm going to add a little nav. And let's go ahead and switch this to flex justify between. So it shows up over here on the left. And uh, this is just a little route hierarchy. We have a link home. So let's go ahead and open the home page and we'll say home. And let's create a page for the dashboard here. If we click this, we'll see it's 404s. So we can create a dashboard page as well. Call this dashboard. And we'll also create one for admin, admin page. This is the admin page. And uh, this admin page should only be visible to auth users. Right, so pretty standard situation here. We have a little route hierarchy, but we want some routes to only be visible uh, to users who are signed in. And right now I'm obviously not signed in, but I can still see it. So how might we protect this? Well, uh, we know we have the get user function from AuthKit. And if we make this an async server component, then we can go ahead and await this. Uh, but this just gets the current user. It doesn't actually stop it from rendering. Well, if we look at the signature here, it turns out there's this cool option called ensure signed in. And if we pass this in and make this true, check this out. As soon as I save, we get a refresh and our app has kicked our user out to the sign in page. So uh, check this out. If I go back, I'm not signed in. I can visit home, I can visit dashboard, just fine, I can refresh. But as soon as I click admin, we're kicked out to our sign-in box. Let's go ahead and continue with Google. I'll sign in as Sam. And now we're on the admin page. And I can only view this if I'm signed in. And I can click around and use the app just fine. I can refresh just fine. And as soon as I sign out, now I'm kicked out back home. So pretty awesome. Just one more handy function here. and. Um, this is such an easy way to protect any server component, not even just a page or a route. This works in any server component, which means you can drop this not only in routes, but in any server component that's reused in your app. And this will make sure that the user has to be signed in before that component is ever rendered. And so I really love how uh, these APIs mesh so well with kind of React's new architecture and Next.js here. And the library does a great job of encouraging kind of best practices, co-locating our authentication checks here with our components and also in our layout, uh, just using server actions right here to sign out, a good old form with a button and links um, with an href here to sign in. So hopefully that gave you a taste of what it's like to work with Authkit and Next.js. There's a ton of functionality in Authkit. We really just scratched the surface. All those gnarly things that you probably don't want to code yourself, like what happens if a user signs in with one provider and then later signs in with another? How do you link those? Authkit and WorkOS take care of all that stuff for you. So uh, if you've never tried it before, I encourage you to give it a shot. Head over to Authkit.com to learn more. And I hope you have fun hacking with Authkit and Next.js.